Hello crafters, welcome back to my channel. And in today's episode, I'm gonna teach you how I made my own handmade candles and how I ended up selling them on Etsy and Shopify. There are a ton of these videos on the internet, but there aren't that many videos that specify how to do it from Canada. Uh, a lot of people in the US use candle science and stuff like that. So I wanted to make a specific video for Canadian candle makers and people who just wanna make candles at home. Let's dive on in. Now I will link everything in the description below. I'm not sponsored by any means. I just wanted to share some tips I learned in terms of sourcing some materials. I did actually order my wax from the US from a company called Wooden Wick Co. And I got sucked into their YouTube videos and their website because honestly, their stuff looks gorgeous. I get it. I got five pounds of their virgin coconut soy wax and five pounds of the cocoa, uh, cocoa apricot cream or something like that and it took about two weeks to get here but if you live in the GTA the two stores that I would recommend going to are New Directions Aromatherapy or Aromatics I think it's called and Botanic Planet those are two local sources of uh, candle wax that I've honestly been struggling to find I'll put the links for those in the description below as well so first I got my wax and weighed it in a pouring pitcher I got this pouring pitcher from can wax from Huntsville Ontario I think I just wanted to support locally I'm trying to stay off Amazon because of Jeff Bezos becoming a trillionaire which is ridiculous so I'm trying to support more local business even if it means costing me a few extra dollars so I actually scooped my wax into the pitcher using an ice cream scooper which was super satisfying because the wax is really soft and it was just really easy. I almost wanted to eat it, but I would not recommend doing that. I'm, I started by making one pound of wax, which is 16 ounces. I would maybe start with, with eight ounces of wax just to do a sample because I ended up making too much. And yeah, I'll get into that in a bit. Then I started recording all the details of the candles I was making into this kind of candle inventory log that I found from this girl Winding Wick Candle Co. She has this free template where you can mark how much of each materials you're using for your candles. It's a great way to keep track of it. And then I just started doing some quick maths uh, and calculated the, sorry, that's quick math. I calculated the percentage of fragrance oil that I would need in the amount of wax. So a general rule is eight to 10% depending on the wax. So I did 8.5, which was about two fluid ounces, or 1.7 fluid ounces, something like that. And I found out that I barely got an ounce of fragrance oil from Wood & Wick Co. And I'll get more into that later, how I problem solved it. So at this point, I knew how much fragrance oil I needed, but didn't know that I didn't have enough quite yet. So I was feeling good, uh, blissfully ignorant about what was to come. So I heated my wax using the double broiler method using the pouring pitcher from Can Wax. Using a metal pouring pitcher for the double broiler is so much faster at melting the wax. Before I was using a glass bowl or a uh, measuring measuring cup uh, when I used to make candles from materials that I bought at Michael's which I do not recommend love Michael's but their candle products are pretty trash you want to make sure your wax is completely melted and gets to a point of one 180 to 190 degrees Fahrenheit you can use like a spatula I got one from Ikea uh, just to stir it and you're also gonna need like a candy thermometer I bought that off Amazon as well but I am working on not using Amazon. It actually heated up super quickly. Max was fully welted, so I welted, melted, sorry. And then I removed the wax from the heat and added in my fragrance oil. And this is when some things took a turn for the worst. I didn't have enough fragrance oil and it was like a honey bourbon uh, fragrance I bought from Wooden Wick. I was like, okay, I'll just mix in some lavender because that's fine. So I mixed in some lavender and it was still barely an, a fl one fluid ounce. So then I mixed in some, something called Midnight Jasmine. So I just have this concoction of smells which ended up just smelling like cologne and I still didn't even have have enough for all my candles so I was making these really mild smelling candles but I said you know what I'm just testing out the wicks I'm testing out the wax the smell I know I can make stronger so I ended up buying more fragrance oil from New Direction Aromatics uh, I love that place because it kind of sounds like One Direction baby you light up no yeah I ended up getting a bunch more fragrance oil and picked it up locally so it all worked out in the end but in the moment I was kind of freaking out 
And then I kept the wicks up, like straight up using popsicle sticks. You can buy these like metal bow ties that help keep your, wa uh, your wicks centered and like secure, but I just didn't feel like paying for those. So I ended up using chopsticks, which are so much easier because they clip the wick kind of firm and they stay there. So chopsticks are great. I wouldn't recommend buying stuff. You don't need like bow ties, maybe down the road. So this is how that first candle turned out. It looks super like nice. And I have my, oh, I can kind of smell it. And I have my um, warning labels at the bottom, which I also bought from Wood & Wood Co. I just wanted to get it all from one place. And then I realized I was paying like $40 in shipping. But here is how it turned out. I got these metal tins from Uline. Wasn't a great price, but wasn't expensive either. So I was pretty happy with how this turned out. The wicks I actually got from Brambleberry. I used the HTP 93 wicks. I could go up a size. But you know, you live and you learn, but after doing it two more tests, I finally got candles that I'm happy with. So this one I have is called Aperol Spritz. I made the label myself and it's tangerine and citrus, which I uh, bought from New Direction Aromatics. It has kind of a, like a yellow, more yellow tint to it, which I kind of think works with the Aperol Spritz theme. And it smells a lot stronger because I put the right, right amount of fragrance oil. If your candle doesn't smell strong the, the, within the first day of making it, don't worry because mine didn't smell either and I was getting really stressed. By the next day, they smelled much more. They had a more of a hot throw and a cold throw, which means cold throw is how the candle smells when it's not on fire and hot throw is how it smells when it is on fire. And a throw is like how much scent it throws from the candle. So mine actually started giving a decent hot and cold throw the day after I made the candle. So I would definitely wait a couple days before trying to test them. The next candle I made is called Watermelon Sugar. Now, I made this before watching the Watermelon Sugar music video by Harry Styles, which disturbed me. I think that music, the music video is about vaginas. It's very graphic. I haven't gotten any sales yet because I literally just put these up yesterday. But uh, if you want, you can check them out in the link below and let me know what you think. I hope this video was helpful for you if you are just getting into the candle making biz or if you're just making candles for fun. If you haven't already, please make sure to hit that like and subscribe button if you enjoyed today's video and turn on that bell notification so you never miss another video. I am going to be probably making more candle videos because I am a little obsessed with making stuff during quarantine. I've also bought some materials to make my own chapsticks and lip balms. So that's gonna probably be next. Uh, but thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.